June 6th meeting of the Advisory uh, Board of Health uh, Committee to uh, order. Uh, first item on the agenda is approval of the uh, minutes from the February 1st uh, meeting. Uh, everyone should have received that uh, by email. Uh, any corrections or additions to the meeting? Hearing none, we'll take a motion for approval. So moved. So moved. Second. We had so moved, so I'll take that as a second. Uh, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, they stand uh, approved. Uh, Christina, you want to speak on the board vacancies and applications? Yes. Um, so, unfortunately, it is the same information I have been giving for the past several months. We do not have any new applications that. Um, meet well we don't have any new applications for the past several months at least i haven't been given any um, or made aware and none um, currently meet the mental health practitioner um, criteria um, continue to hand out the application or push the application as much as i can um, but we, we don't have any takers at this time well i i keep trying to uh, encourage people i know who work in that field or know somebody who worked in that field or they want to volunteer their own psychiatrist or <laughs> to uh, uh, get involved and hopefully we'll be able to fill that position in the in the future. Uh, next item on the uh, agenda is uh, I, uh, one that I put on uh, in my uh, wanderings in the healthcare field. I, I ran across an article that uh, talked about the 259% increase in uh, syphilis cases from 2015 to 2021. It's an interesting uh, problem that we're probably going to see more of and that now uh, pap smear screening, which used to be a time that we did STD testing, is going to every three years recommendation, which means people will get it done probably less often than that. Um, and uh, birth control pills are going to be over the counter, which means women seeking care will go to the physician less often. Um, so I, I just was, uh, I also ran across an article that said uh, that Jackson County was the third highest county in the state for syphilis cases. And so I was asked Christina to just say a little word about what our current statistics are showing. For STDs so, in general. Yeah, so I'm actually going to have Lauren Campbell, who's much smarter on this topic, um, speak. Um, and I'm sure she's trying to unmute herself. Right there we are. There we go. Um, unfortunately, I don't have numbers for 2021 or earlier because um, the communicable disease part of the health department opened up halfway through 2021. So I only have like a few numbers on that half of the year, so nothing really that we can use for comparison. But um, in 2022 and 2023, our rates of chlamydia stayed about the same. Um, they were at 120 per 100,000 residents for chlamydia. That was the one we saw the most. Gonorrhea um, decreased from 2022 to 2023. In 2022, there was a rate of 101.6 per 100,000 residents, but in 2023, it dropped down to 56.9 per 100,000 residents. Our syphilis cases did increase slightly. Uh, we saw a rate of 21 per 100,000 residents um, in 2022, and then in 2023, it was 28.4 per 100,000 residents. Um, those syphilis numbers do include the congenital syphilis, though. I didn't have those separated out, but that was probably. There were a few congenital cases each year um, that are included in those numbers. 2024 so far, we're looking on track for it to be about syphilis looks like it's probably going to have increased again. Um, gonorrhea looks like it'll probably stay about the same and chlamydia is still the highest of the three so far this year. I think that's most of what I have. 
Okay. We do see a lot of people who have all three of them come in. Like a lot of the names we see have multiple um, different ones, whether at the same time or coming in at a separate visit, but a lot of the names do repeat. Thank you for that information. It does it provides or presents a, a screening problem for providers because uh, chlamydia and gonorrhea, you can screen with a urine sample. So in the sexuatric pediatric population, it's fairly easy to convince parents to let their child give a urine sample. And syphilis takes a blood screening, and so it's more challenging to say we need to draw blood on your child as well. So uh, uh, I know from the dentistry standpoint, you're exposed to blood on a daily basis. Uh, uh, so it definitely can be something that's uh, concerning. So it's uh, an interesting fact that we're dealing with, and hopefully we'll find a way to uh, develop other screening uh, techniques or at least encourage screening. Any uh, questions for Lauren at all? Or? I have a well, I have a question. Uh, many many years ago, I do remember. Uh, for a marriage license, syphilis testing was required. And if I remember correctly, they did away with that. Is that true now or not? Uh, I've been married um, just 12 years, but I can tell you 12 years ago, I did not require a test. I just had to fill out a piece of paper. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm just going back thinking 30, 40 years ago that it used to be required, but I, yeah, I didn't recall if it uh, if that's true anymore or not. I can remember when you used to have to have a uh, syphilis test in order to get a food handler permit, which until recently I thought was weird, but a local restaurant had a problem with that recently. <laughs> so uh, it's going to be a challenge for us all. Uh, next item on the agenda is just a discussion on department staffing. I know we'd had some fluctuations at the time of the last meeting, and I'm just wondering where we were. Um, so our department staffing is holding steady right now. Um, we, yeah, we're holding steady right now. We have um, a good number of grants coming in that are able to support our staff uh, for the next couple of years. And so we're very happy with that. Um, we are working towards accreditation. And so our staff are staying very, very, very busy um, trying to get the community health assessment out, trying to get everything written, trying to, trying to jump through all the hoops and mark all those boxes that we know we need to. Um, I know that ARCH, of course, was something that we were concerned uh, about continued funding for our licensed clinical social workers. Uh, Councilmember Hobart, um, on his very last night with the council, um, did push forward, um, I believe it was a resolution to have the council, uh, you know, direct for opioid settlement funds to be used um, as the Board of Health had recommended. Um, and that did pass, so they are going to at least be supported for this coming year, this next fiscal year. Um, I was also able to get some of the grant funds that we had um, that we're paying them to be extended so that we could continue using that grant. Um, so they do have funding for this next year. Uh, the council did move forward with forming a separate opioid settlement committee um, that they'll be choosing individuals for. I believe the the one uh, lone vote of opposition was Perkins, who um, pointed out that the Board of Health had been asked to look at this and had given recommendations, um, but the council still voted to form a new separate opioid settlement committee. So they'll be looking at those funds going forward. To my knowledge, they haven't selected anyone yet for the committee. They've just moved forward with forming the committee. Um, but right now, ARCH is funded. Staffing are funded. Um, we are very fortunate we were able to make sure that our budget 
balanced for this coming year. So we are able to make sure that all of my staff have their jobs um, should they want them and perform as such moving forward. So. Good news. It is. Questions for Christina at all from board members? Okay. There was uh, one item I wanted to just taste, touch uh, bases on, uh, and that's uh, the city's unsheltered work group. Uh, really, for the last year, the uh, city has had a uh, com committee, which is actually now two work groups. Uh, that have been meeting monthly and they're made up of representatives of multiple groups, multiple organizations, multiple individuals that are interested in the issues concerning those who are unsheltered. Uh, and I attend uh, those meetings as a physician representative of the Board of Health. So I thought I really should give at least a brief report about what's going on there. Uh, in the past, it's been incredibly challenging to estimate the number of unhoused in the commit in the uh, community. Typically, they would pick a day in uh, January or February when it was uh, 22 below zero and go out and count the number of people who were sleeping in tents, which isn't very many people when it's 22 below zero. Uh, in the previous count, there were 82 individuals who were unhoused in all of Eastern Jackson County. And it was like, OK, so uh, the work groups devised uh, another mechanism or a more vigorous mechanism uh, as far as. Obtaining a census uh, this past uh, winter and. Uh, uh, we found 130 people in independence alone. That report is unhoused. Uh, that probably doesn't include all the couch surfing students that there are, and there's a significant number of students uh, it, it, from elementary through high school uh, that are on this family's couch for a month and then rotate to another family's couch for another month. Uh, and I I suspect we didn't count them, and this is probably just the tip of the iceberg. Um, there's uh, part of what this work group is doing is trying to find ways to find housing for folks. Uh, one of those projects is uh, decriminalization of being unhoused. If you are uh, living in your car or living on the street, it's against the law and you'll get a ticket and you'll get a fine that you won't pay because you don't have a job. And then when you do find housing, they'll say, have you ever been convicted uh, of crimes? And you have to say, yes, I was homeless. And they'll say, well, we can't rent to you because you're a criminal. Um, the, the committee uh, is working very hard on finding solutions to that. Uh, some of which are pending and are going to be very exciting, and I'll try to bring that back to the uh, uh, committee. Uh, on the downside is there is an incredible increase in the cost of housing. Uh, there was a uh, recent house that is 750 square feet in Independence, and it is listed for $200,000. So uh, that's nice if you're trying to sell your house that's 750 square feet. It's not nice if you uh, are uh, unhoused and looking for a place to live. Uh, rents are through the roof. Uh, and so uh, one of the programs we're looking at are rental assistance programs. Uh, anyway, so there's some exciting work that's going on, and I'll try to keep the advisory board appraised of what's going on and come back with a better presentation at some point in time. Uh, but it's uh, there's some exciting things that'll be done and uh, hopefully we're going to find a way to uh, get these families into safe housing and they can continue in that housing in the future. Questions at all about that? Any other new business that needs to come before the the uh, committee tonight. Christina, the only question I had, and I should have asked you earlier, uh, 
I've been hearing that we're anticipating a very, very hot summer. And typically you have some kind of stations or the we've got places for folks to cool at your sad block in the works or if you you have something draft um, ideas about how you're going to manage that. So the city uh, is going to has been working with the libraries, the public libraries to ensure that they stay as cooling stations. Um, CSL has been doing their part. Uh, I believe Sermon Center is an unofficial cooling station now. Um, as in, I mean, what they had been doing in the past was if if it was a hot day, they announced that Sermon Center was a cooling station, but the hours didn't change for the Sermon Center. Um, so now they're just keeping it as an unofficial one. Um, and if CSL needs to be contacted for those who need uh, overnight or weekend um, accommodations to get out of the heat, then that's who they reach out to a CSL to see about hotel vouchers, um, working with 311, working with Arch, working with anyone and everyone they can to try to connect people. Um, so I know those meetings, um, they have not scheduled a meeting to my knowledge uh, so far this year. Lauren can correct me. Olivia, our planner, would be the one who would be doing that. Lauren, do you know, have they scheduled one specifically for the summers yet? No, Olivia and I talked about it last week. They don't have it on the schedule. All of the sites that were previously cooling sites are still listed on all of the websites as cooling sites. Even if the city doesn't post them, they have not been removed from those other ones, so they should still be there if they're going to the big list. OK, thank you. I, I, I just know all of a sudden we'll get a week of 100 plus and then we're scrambling. Oh, agreed. The heat and the cold seems to sneak up on us suddenly without notice, so. Yes. Any other business we need to attend to tonight? Hearing none, I'll accept a motion for adjournment. Uh, so moved. All right. We had we had two so moves. I'll take that as the second, and we'll see when uh, everyone at the next meeting. Thank you.